This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. European and especially Russian techniques and choreography, ballet began to attract a smattering of practitioners and followers in this country. Other dance innovations blossomed from the United States at the turn of the century. Isadora Duncan and Loewy Fuller began dancing in ways distinct from ballet and the dance done in vaudeville shows, freeing movement from the constraining technique of ballet and the flashiness of vaudeville and using it to convey philosophical, religious, or artistic ideas and beliefs. Isadora Duncan drew on Hellenic ideals of government, art, architecture, and philosophy to liberate the body in reverence to the freedom of the individual spirit. Freeing her body from the corset, she reinvented walking, skipping, and leaping, and elevated dance from a popular entertainment to the hallowed halls of art and nature, sometimes performing barefoot in flowing white tunics on forested lawns to classical music. Loewy Fuller experimented with early motion picture techniques to explore the dimensions of light by creating shadows and refractions through a diaphanous flowing costume, transforming scientific inventions into new theatrical visions. Duncan and Fuller received their greatest fame in Europe, largely because of new approaches to movement spreading throughout Europe but their innovations laid the foundation for the success of Ruth St. Denis in the United States. Born in 1879 in Somerville, New Jersey, Ruth Dennis grew up amid the turn-of-the-century attention to physical culture that was nurtured in her own home by her mother. Determined to raise a healthy girl, Dennis's mother took her to classes in the Del Sartre system of movement. In this theory of the body and its meaning, developed by a 19th-century French philosopher, François Delsart, certain zones of the body, head, heart, and lower limbs, corresponded to different philosophical states, mind, soul, and life, respectively. To this attention to physicality, Dennis's mother added a Christian devotion, a strong will, and attendance at the spectacles that came into town at the Palisades Amusement Park, including P.T. Barnum's Circus and Egypt Through the Centuries, 1892. The combination inspired Dennis to put movement to theatrical use. Working in dime museums, vaudeville, and variety shows, Dennis navigated through the theatrical world of the turn of the century, picking up costume and stage tips, making distinctions in audiences and venues, and learning a variety of dance steps, from clog dances and Irish jigs and reels to skirt dancing and gymnastic trickeries. In 1900, she ended up in the company of David Velasco, a vaudeville impresario, and it was here that she began to develop a vision of herself as a solo dancer where she could combine her deep religiosity with theatrical flair. Seeing a poster advertising Egyptian deity cigarettes, she began researching other cultures, and in 1905 left Belasco for a new career in staging dancing pictures of foreign lands under a new name, Ruth St. Denis. St. Denis's Hindu-inspired Radha, 1906, served as her entree into a solo career in theaters and private performances in the homes of society women. In the early 20th century, the arts were a respected avocation for white, middle- and upper-class girls and women, but a rare vocation. Training in the arts was to produce cultured girls and women as another sign of education and manners, not professional artists. Wealthy white women began to host dance soloists in their homes as a way in which to display their cultured worldview. In so doing, they also supported those women who were struggling to form careers as artists and loosen dance from its vaudeville and burlesque ties. In 1898, for example, Isadora Duncan danced at the Newport, Rhode Island summer residence of Ellen Mason, a Bostonian. The patrons of the dance concert were all women and included Mrs. William Astor of New York City. Ruth St. Denis also performed in homes 
often as a part of a benefit or charitable cause, including a 1914 birthday party for Anna Howard Shaw, one of the leaders of the women's suffrage movement. This patronage by elite members of society gave dance.